thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to present a, a, a work. Uh, I'm working with a team of uh, five researchers in Mexico. We we develop some tools and methodologies for shape analysis in archaeology. We call ourselves Shape in Archaeology Group. Uh, and we are part of a research network uh, that um, uh, it's, uh, whose mission is to develop methodologies and technologies for, for cultural heritage dissemination. So we are part of this group and uh, we invite you. We, what we do in this network is to publish some papers. So we are interested in uh, people who want to publish papers either in Spanish or English. Uh, if you have some work that you want to share, uh, we, we are happy. We publish one book a year, so we are, you are welcome to, to join this network in Mexico. Uh, what I'm going to present today is a, is a study case. It's, it's, a, it's a tool that we develop uh, uh, out of necessity to classify some stone mass that we found in Mexico. These masks were found in 14 offerings, Aztec offerings, uh, dated from the 14th century. Um, and also we find a lot of figurines in this kind of offerings. You see in the screen one example of these caches. And this is the kind of uh, uh, artifacts that, that we found. So, so these are some examples. Um, what is interesting of this collection is that uh, there are about 10,000 of these objects um, uh, spread around in, in museums around the world. But most of those artifacts uh, were found uh, far away from Mexico City, where, where, where my collection was found, and uh, which is not rare in itself. The Aztecs used to extract tribute from, uh, from different places in, in Mesoamerica. So, or, or by trade. So that's in, the location of these artifacts in Mexico City is not so rare. However, the style of the mass is quite um, uh, interesting because they don't have Aztec features. They, they resemble objects that are found m in much earlier times, uh, uh, like uh, a thousand years before the Aztecs, so um, one question uh, that uh, archaeologists have been ask, uh, asking for a long time is, uh, is, is the Aztecs collected these objects as antiques and then deposited in these offerings? Or the styles survived so long that they were produced in Aztec times, uh, imitating the styles of antiquity? Uh, so that's, that's uh, some questions. Um, uh, the, the, the mask resembled the style, the style of, of, of objects in, Guerrero's, in, in the Guerrero state in southern Mexico uh, and uh, produced uh, in much earlier times. Uh, some people date these artifacts from 200 to 1000 uh, BC or even, uh, or even bef before. Uh, Where is the offerings where we found them are from the uh, 14th, 15th centuries. So it's a long uh, lapse of time between the production of this mask and the, the context in which we found them. Uh, so these are the questions that our archaeologists have been, have been asking. Did they collect antique objects? Or alternatively, as I said before, uh, the, the, the style survived. But we don't know much because there are very few of these masks which have been found in uh, archaeological context. Most of the collection in, in different collections in the world came from uh, the illegal diggings. So we don't really know the, the exact chronology of many of masks, except of this collection. This collection was found with very clear chronology. So, um, so we have all these questions around this collection. And then to complicate matters, um, uh, there are many masks that cannot be classified in one or two, or in one precise style because they share features between different styles. So like they are in between two styles. You, you see some examples here. There are more examples in this. Um, for example, we have uh, at the top, uh, the two masks at the top, 
They are what archaeologists call the Teotihuacan style. Teotihuacan is a very important archaeological site, uh, 40 miles from Mexico City. And then on the, on the bottom, you have two masks that really resemble a lot the Teotihuacan masks, but they are not precisely. Uh, and so they call it Teotihuacanoid style. Mm. So what we decided is to create a tool that which allow us to convert one style into the other. So for example, you have on the, on the left side, the ma mass in one style, style A, and, the, and another mass in other style. And we, what we try to do is to produce a sequence of 3D models uh, so we can, when we have some doubt about a third mask, we can place it in the, in the series and also to measure how far it's from one style to the other. So that's the basic idea of the tool that we develop. Uh, this is, uh, we, are, uh, we are not developing actually the algorithm. The algorithm was published in 2000 by, uh, by uh, Christian Shelton, it's, it's, uh, uh, and at the time the algorithm didn't cause much attention because it was very difficult to implement and the, the machines in those days, a PC really couldn't run the algorithm very well. However, now we have uh, computer power to, to really use the algorithm. So we, what we are doing is only implementing this, this, this technique. We are not developing the technique. No? We, we, so basically what it does is to match points in one surface to the other. And so for example, uh, it's easy for us to see that it's going to match this point of the, of the nose or the eyes or, or, or the mouth in, the, in two masks. But what the algorithm, for us it's easy to see that the, the one point matches the other, no? But uh, the algorithm does it automatically which is, that, that's what is interesting of this algorithm. Mm. So the problem is a, is a problem of matching to 3D surfaces. And uh, this is based on an equation that uh, have three parameters, uh, three conditions. It's a, it's a matrix that uh, 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 first it takes the one 3D model and takes very few points and try to match those points in the other in the other model. Uh, so it uses very very few of the points in the point cloud, and if this matches, they in a, in a second iteration it selects more points and uh, uh, and like that successively until it finds some uh, structural correspondences between one object and and the other. So these are the three conditions, it has to be similarity, it has to be uh, a similar structure, and also this condition called plausibility, which is, it doesn't make sense to convert one mass into an airplane, for example. So it has to be something that actually has some, some structure, global structure similarities. So I will uh, show you in practice what this does. Basically, so it's basically converting the mass in one one mass into the other. Is it running? Is it no? We yes. Don't, it's, we don't see it on the screen. Huh? Oh, sorry. It's running here. Um, You are seeing now, uh, starting and converts one, one object into the other. 
Um, you can select how many transitions, how many steps you want. We, it can be 10, it can be 100. We do 100 models for each example. So this is uh, what the, the algorithm produces. It produces the 3D models, the virtual models, and you have the, the amount of models that you, that you want. I will show you another example. This is uh, the sequence. That is a third example. This is another interesting example. Now the software. This is we are still uh, developing the whole software. We have uh, just the the main interface now. What is important is also that every feature which is uh, converted into another form. Uh, has associated a value, a deformation value. So you can always uh, tell uh, which features need more deformation, and therefore we can also uh, see uh, to do some some comparisons, uh, some uh, quantitative comparisons between the models. Uh, so we can always say that one model have 20% features of one of, 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 of mask A or mask B. So basically, that's what you see uh, in the color in the middle of the, of the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think that's, that's all. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you very much.